Right now my tungsten looks like hammered dog, but it's making a web. We're at the ore bucket building where we've got to do a little bit of welding. We've got the layout here. The town is aptly named after the ore bucket because of the oldest mine in the count country. Country? It's old. It's old. Let's do some welding. Let's get in there and check it out. We're at the top floor of the Orville Commercial Center and we're at the Drushdy Shala. Drushdy. Drushdy Shala. Perfect. Perfect. We're going to install some plates for these guys to do some really cool inversion stuff as they do their yoga. So first things first is we got some serious steel that we've got to prep. We're going to TIG weld everything so we don't throw a lot of sparks. Everything's going to be center on center. Get everything clean and get our piece clean that we're going to mount in place. So let's prep everything. You know what it takes. You got to prep it before you can weld anything. So this material had a little bit of wax and patina on the surface and when we're going to go to TIG weld this so we don't put off a lot of heat and sparks, we're going to clean this off because all that wax and stuff is just going to make that TIG weld spitter and pop and spit and we're going to get porosity, all other kinds of problems. Thanks Dave for holding up the, this You're welcome. fire blanket there. We're going to try to bevel this thing like halfway so that we get you know, the most out of it. We're gonna to try to get complete joint penetration on this. So we're just gonna take a couple more strokes. Then we're gonna flip this piece over. A quick one, two, three, and we see that we got maybe an eighth of an inch of steel there. I'm gonna go ahead and just remove a little bit more steel so that we make sure that we get all the way through. Did I mention inversion? Like they're gonna be hanging people upside down on these things, so I'm gonna make sure that there's complete joint penetration. That's all we need. Just anywhere the weld touches, that's all we need. Now we're gonna be using the Renegade Volt today. Now we are indoors and we do have power, so we are gonna plug into what's accessible to us, which is 110 power, and we are gonna be using the batteries as well. So not only are we gonna be pulling off the charge of the batteries, but off the wall, it's gonna make our batteries last a little bit longer. We're gonna go ahead and go back to our menu. We're gonna change our process because today we're gonna be doing live lift TIG. It's gonna tell us where we hook up our leads. I got DC negative for my TIG torch. I've got my gas hose plugged in. It's already plumbed in all the way to our argon bottle. We're gonna turn that gas on, run something around 20 CFH for this carbon steel. I've got some 70S6 TIG wire. We're gonna pop our gas on, get our process set right. We're gonna set our amperage. We've got some thick plates, so we're just gonna go ahead and max this thing out at 140 for what we're doing. Real quick, before we do anything, I need to remake the marks so I know where to center everything. Where's Dave at? What's the magnet do on wood, Dave? It stays right there, it's a nice shim. <laughs> Stays right there. What's half of three, everybody? One and a half. Yeah. But you want a mark on either side, right? So, inch and three eighths on one side. Inch and three eighths. Oh yeah, because we do have a piece of steel there. Ba -boom. Ba -ba -ba -boom. And then we can put a magnet right on there. Oh, and line us up. Man, Dave just, Dave, Dave is just, I'm so glad Dave is here. Someone hand me the iron. Okay, we'll give it a little tack. We'll tack the tops first. We're just gonna go ahead and check on both sides. We're at an inch and a half right on the center of our piece of flat bar that we're welding onto this other thick piece of steel. We're gonna put a tack on the top. Watch your eyeballs. Now that we got our tack on, we're gonna go to this other side, make sure it's lined up with an inch and a half, and then the bottoms are lined up with an inch and a half, and then we can put a bead on it. Just checked we're at an inch and a half. Now we're going to go ahead and remove our magnets here. We're going to pull measurements, make sure everything is square before we try to tack the bottom side. Inch and three eighths. Inch and three eighths. We should be good to tack that bottom now. And it makes a really smooth strike, like really smooth whenever I get started. We got all the tacks in now. We can just weld her solid. We're going to weld this side, and then go the opposite side and weld that side, and just put some nice welds on these to hang some hang some people from it to do some inversion to get their backs fixed. Just doing more for the community. So I'm just kind of trying to get this open root field to get that complete joint penetration. I'm pulling my wire away. 
and I, I'm letting it kind of open up from that, that piece of plate and I'm just dipping into my puddle. 140 amps isn't a lot for what we're working with so if we didn't prep the way that we did this would be a much harder weld. But because we did prep to a real thin edge to this other piece of adjacent base metal to this upright it's not so bad. So now just for simplicity's sake I'm kind of wiggling and walking this cup. It just happened to work out a little bit better on this joint. And I really like a good little wiggle walk because I don't burn my hand up as much. There's a bit of a groove that I've got to fill in kind of to make up for what I didn't fill in on the back side because this had a bit of a gap in an open root. 140 amps isn't real hot. We want that complete joint penetration but likely we're going to have to make a second pass on a couple of these. We're going to try to do a two for pass right on this one. Yeah, we're going to like do that root pass and do that little bit of a fill pass. This is more of that walk the cup now that I got room to move my cup. It can be really gentle on that wire. I'm able to put the weld pass I want in one pass instead of two. I didn't even realize we didn't have one of the batteries in this freaking bolt. We were running only off 110. We got four fresh batteries in here now, so we'll see with the hybrid mode if we can get a little bit more beans in these plates because it's going to help us out. We're going to run off hybrid mode, so we have the 110. What this is going to do is help prevent any breakers from tripping because we're going to be helping pull off the batteries as well as the 110 power, as well as saving our battery life as we pull off the 110 power at the same time. Hybrid mode works as soon as you plug in your 110 or your 220 with the batteries, you got it. You're running a 100 foot extension cord, this could really save your nuts as far as having all the beans you need at the end of the torch. We're going to go ahead and second pass this thing in case anyone that's extra meaty hangs on this thing can invert themselves too. Right now my tungsten looks like hammered dog, but it's making a round. The only reason why I went back to this one is because I didn't fill it past that bevel edge that I put on. And that's just a welding no-no. That ought to hang a fat guy. <laughs> right now I'm freehand. I don't have that cup on the metal. So I'm using my finger to brace on this piece of wood. But this piece of wood isn't super secure, so until I get to a point where I can wiggle, I'll do this freehand technique, which is a little bit inconsistent for me until I get high enough. And then I can pop out, I can set my cup where I need it. My tungsten's a little too far out. Boop, 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 boop. That'll get me close enough to where I can start walking now. So now I'm pushing up against my T-plate, my 3F fillet weld. And all I'm doing is now I'm, I'm pushing against my fillet. I'm not pushing up, which is the direction I'm going. I'm pushing straight into it so that I'm able to kind of stick to that steel where I want. And I'm moving as fast as this puddle will let me. I put, we put bevels on these plates for a reason so that we can get really good joint penetration. And on that root pass, we weren't able to fill that complete joint penetration at 150 or 140 amps. So we had to do this second pass. Not ideal, it does take a little bit more time, but we're gonna make sure that this is as solid as the customer wanted. Just that little switch to hybrid mode is I'm seeing a lot more fluid puddle. It's helpful. Now that we free handed our way up to this point, I can switch this little wiggle. I call this the old chicken wing because you got that arm in that weird location. Now we can easily fix this by switching our torch, changing just how we're holding it, and boom, just like that we're a lot more comfortable. We don't have that chicken wing arm. The cup is a circle. You can walk on any part that you want. That'll do. That ought to get some people inverted like a mug here at the Dristy Shala. That's going to hang and get these people where they need to be. We got our job done. They didn't want no sparks. We were able to see how the volt performed. We hooked it up to hybrid, get a little bit of the extra juice we needed to finish this job. This machine is for indoors, outdoors, field work, no matter what. We'll see you guys on the next one.